Hi. Hi. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. I'm, I'm glad to be I'm here. To be here. I'm, uh, I'm Lea Rosemar. Lea Rosemar. I'm from uh, she, uh, her. she, her. I'm based, I'm in, based Hamburg, in Hamburg and, and I'm a front developer, front developer at, at Sinashrada. And, and I have I a website, have web uh, lea.codes, and a code pen profile, uh, codepen.io slash terabout. Terabout is my uh, nickname I chose years ago and kept it. And uh, I just show some of my works I'm doing with WebGL when I just open the link. And I'm doing lots of digital arts like uh, fractal arts and WebGL things, uh, optical illusions, and um, recently also uh, 2D animations with uh, WebGL, like this flying smiley holding a trans flag. <laughs> and yeah, let's get back to the talk. So my talk is about painting cute uh, 2D art in WebGL and also 3 ds And um, we are going to thrum as to what is WebGL and some fundamentals. Uh, we also have a coding session and um, my slides are on Netlify under this link. You can just open this link. Yeah, I can also maybe share it in the chat. No, I cannot. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, let's go to the next slide. What is WebGL? So it's a graphics library for the web uh, and it lives inside a canvas element and um, yeah, it's, it draws points, lines, triangles uh, super fast uh, because it runs on the, on the GPU, which is a graphics processing unit and uh, supported in all major browsers and um, yeah, also game engines like Unity and Unreal Engine use uh, WebGL when compiled to the web. And there's also 3D libraries for the web like uh, 3JS or Pixie.js and Babylon.js and many more. But let's first go through um, how WebGL works. I've got this pipeline slide here. And um, first of all, there are um, there's some kind of data coming in. Um, these are buffers um, in, a, in a three a three D libraries. Uh, there you also say it's a geometry coming in. Um, this could be a triangle in the simplest case, or a plane, or a cube, or more complex objects. And uh, these buffers are passed into a vertex shader. Um, this vertex shader is a function that processes this buffer data and um, then this, uh, this data is going through a rasterization step. I've put uh, together a little demo how that might look like. So this is a little scheme <laughs> of pixels, really big pixels. And uh, yeah, this vertex shader um, specif yeah, specifies these coordinates of these um, of these points from from this triangle, and yeah, this rasterization process uh, determines all the pixels uh, which are needed, and then there's a fragment shader, uh, which is a function for determining the color of the um, pixels. It works a lot like Tixieland. If you know Tixieland, it's a creative coding playground, um, where, uh, which does exactly what fragment shaders do. Uh, you have a function where you get in some data like uh, the, the X and Y coordinate of the pixel, and um, additionally or optional, some time value. And uh, the output of this function is basically the color in the shader. And uh, in Tixieland, this is uh, a red dot if it's minus one and a white dot if it's one. So you can just play here and put in one or a minus one or something like sine x or uh, add some time. And this is uh, exactly how also fragment shaders work. 
So this playground is also uh, really nice to get into shaders. And yeah, the result is basically pixels on screen. And yeah, I've also written down what uh, Vertex Shader exactly does and how it looks like. Um, yeah, in, um, first uh, it gets the input from, uh, from the buffer and stores it in an attribute. Uh, in this case, this, it is this um, position attribute. And this shader does nothing else as, uh, as just passing this position attribute to the output variable GL position. So it just projects it to, yeah, to the coordinates. So uh, the fragment shader is um, for getting the color. And this looks like this. Uh, the most important part is here um, this GL frag color output value, which outputs a vector four value, which is a value with four components. And vector four is normally x, y, z coordinates and um, a w coordinate. And uh, it is also used for colors, uh, where it is uh, for red, green, blue, and alpha value. In this case, it is an orange. So for 100% for, um, for red, 50% green, 0% blue, and 100% yeah, alpha value. So you can also use half transparent pixels. And um, additionally, you have another input value for, for the XY coordinate from the pixel on, on screen. This is a vector four, and um, this XY is a shorthand for com converting this vector four to a vector two value. Yeah. Um, I've also put together some rules for this language you've seen here in the screenshot. Um, You've seen this language is um, very similar to a C style language. So it has um, brackets and uh, semicolons and others uh, add, um, different from JavaScript as the semicolons are required. This is something you, uh, you do wrong very often. <laughs> and um, also there's a strict typing in there. So there's a distinction between float and integer numbers. And float numbers must contain a dot. So uh, like uh, one is written 1.0 or uh, dot five for a 0 0.5 or a five dot. So you can omit this um, leading or tra uh, trailing zeros. Um, there's no implicit conversion between float and int. And uh, yeah, there are built-in vector and matrix arithmetics and also vector and matrix types. So here I also have listed some types you, you have available in GLSL. Um, these are very similar to C, like um, bool, uh, integer, float, and double types. And um, additionally, you have uh, types for vector arithmetics, like vector two with two components, x, y, uh, or three, x, y, z, or vector four is x, y, z, w. And um, there are also matrices. And uh, the cool thing about um, these data types is uh, you have built in plus, minus, uh, so arithmetics work out of the box. and uh, multiplication also works out of the box. And there's also one additional type for um, getting texture data. Um, I'm not going to cover it too much here, but I link to further resources here. And also additional, we have some um, additional variable types. So uh, you've seen this attribute keyword in this vertex shader. And um, this is where uh, the vertex shader gets the data from uh, the buffers. Um, 
there are also uniform var variables. Um, this is this, these are like global variables you pass in from the JavaScript side before executing your WebGL program. Uh, and um, finally, there is also a varying variable, which is for passing variables from the vertex shader to the fragment shader. I've also listed some use file functions here in this um, this website, and yeah, um, I will only quickly go through these these uh, functions. So length is for getting a length of a float or vector value, and um, these are also linked to uh, to the book of shaders, which is a great resource for shader programming, uh, where you can look how the length works. So like um, here, the center is zero and um, yeah, this, the color represents the value of the, of the length at the specific pixel position. And here you see um, the center is dark, so there's the length zero. And here, if you go to the outside, the um, color becomes lighter and lighter. So uh, there is it one, for example. So, this is a tiny reference for looking up these functions. Uh, and not also in, uh, in very, very useful uh, functions uh, is a step function, which is, which is like an if clause, but uh, yeah, but in a function. So you, you can um, test if the value is lesser than uh, 0 0.5 in, in this example. And in, if that's the case, then the step function returns 0, and else it returns 1. So this is also a very useful function in GLSL. Um, smooth step is roughly the same like step, but with interpolation. So you have some uh, smoothing between two values. So let's also look, look at this. So you have this, not a sharp edge here, but a curve, but works roughly the same. And yeah. You also have built-in interpolation, which is also very nice. It is this mix. A uh, mix could be used for color mixing, like uh, take in a red and a green and mix mix these up. This is, there's also a demo with, with mixing colors. This uh, mixes uh, blue and yellow and uh, fades between the two. This is very useful for animations. Yeah, and you can also create gradients with this. Yeah, clamp, uh, you may know it from uh, CSS. It's a new uh, thing in CSS, but it's, uh, yeah, it's also there in GLSL. It's um, clamping the value between uh, two limits. Yeah. This, uh, limits uh, this function between 0 and 1. And there are also uh, usual uh, trigonometric functions you also have in C-like C languages. So, let's breathe. <laughs> so, um, now it's coding time. I will um, open up a code sandbox and uh, let's try out some uh, things I've talked about. And uh, this code, uh, code sandbox uses uh, 3.js and also React 3 Fiber and uh, so-called distance functions. Um, I will just uh, first open this code sandbox link. So, hope it works. <laughs> Yeah, as you, as you can see, um, there's, this is just a simple demo where, um, where I've created a plane geometry. And um, yeah, I'm using React, so um, I uh, have this component style. 
here. Um, so let's go in this shader plane and look how it looks like here, this markup. I have defined this um, mesh where I define a plane ge ge geometry and a shader material, which I put on top of this geometry. And uh, I pass a vertex shader and a fragment shader to this shader material and also uniform variables. Uh, these uniform variables I set from the JavaScript si side. Um, these are basically a time value I set here and a resolution I set. And yeah, I also added uh, orbit controls and the perspective camera just, just you can uh, just navigate through this and flip it a bit. So let's go to this vertex shader. Um, this is a plain vertex shader you get from 3JS. Um, there is this GL position equals position. And also uh, 3JS provides uh, additional variables for project projection into this 3D space. This is projection matrix, view matrix, and model matrix. And uh, yeah, this is for this perspective projection. Um, you can remove this and I will show. So save, hope it reloads. Yeah, and then it, it uses just the full screen. And in this fragment shader, I've defined some functions. Uh, I will come to them later. And there I have this um, fragment where I just output pink for now. I can, um, the first step I manual, uh, normally do is that I define a background function where I do something like this, back three background, back three background, and I return, I um, put it into another function where I say, we yeah, define a color and maybe another color, color one and color two. Let's fade it from orange to blue. So um, yeah, semicolons are important and Whoops. I also pass this position variable into this background. So then I can use this mix function to use color one, color two. And then I can say P X. and see how it how this works. I may have to save this. Yeah. Ah, yes, I have to also add this background. So here I'm uh, putting together this vector four value with a vector three value. Um, this is also a feature of um, GLSL that you can put together these vectors and um, X, Y, Z value. Um, and also a one value. And yeah, this works. And um, yeah, in this, this position variable, um, the value is going from 0, 1 to 1 for uh, the x, y coordinates. Um, so here in the left is a 0, 1, the x value, and here in the right is 1, and here here is minus one and here is plus one. And um, yeah, this mix value normally takes um, value from 
zero to one, and that's why uh, there is uh, this this fading is is just starting here in the middle. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've also defined some uh, functions here. Uh, I will go slightly back to the slides where I say, yeah, I've used 3JS and React 3 Fiber, but I also use distance functions to create shapes in uh, 3 uh, in WebGL shaders. And uh, let's have a look at this. So uh, distance functions are functions that return a distance from a specific point. And uh, with this technique, you can create shapes with uh, with these simple functions. Um, there are, uh, for every shape, there is a, a specific distance function. And um, in this website, from uh, this is an, uh, digital artist uh, uh, in the demo scene uh, called Inigo Kiles. And yeah, he um, wrote the, uh, all these articles about distance functions. And here, um, here is this example for creating a circle. And I will show you how you use this function in your WebGL program. So let's go to this link here. And this works like this. So you can do, I normally also define something like a scene for this. And also give in this um, vector point into this function. And then I also uh, say, OK. Um, This, um, this creates a circle in the center of the screen with a radius of pi, uh, 0.5. Um, but this also uh, only gives uh, returns the distance from the circle from a specific position. This position is coming from this point. This is the current pixel position. And I return it here in this function. And then to make, make use of this function, I can use this step function. <clears throat> so so um, one specific thing of uh, these uh, these distance functions is um, they return a minus one when they are inside an object, and uh, uh, no, they they uh, return a one when they are inside an object, and a min negative value if they are outside of an object. And so this way you can test this with the step function. So I'm testing if this value is lesser than zero. And um, then I will, um, the step function will return either zero or one. And if it returns zero, then this color one is, uh, is returned. And if I return one, this color two is returned. And let's see if it works. Yeah, yeah, it works. So um, one additional thing I also do in this uh, in very often is I uh, use smooth step. So um, you may see there are some crisp ex um, edges. I'm on a screen with a device pixel ratio of one and uh, there are these crisp ed edges at this uh, border. And so ca you can smooth these with the smooth step function with using a second parameter and then there's some smoothing going on. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I went very far with this. Um, you can, um, apart from just drawing simple shapes on the shaders, I will just reduce this smoothness a bit. 
you can um, put together more more shapes, like adding two circles with this add function, which use the min min value, so the min value from these two values you pass in, and there's also a subtract function, and I will show you what I've built with that. I will go to another code sandbox um, where I coded a shape with this technique. And um, the shape I built was a transgender symbol with a waving transgender flag. And let's see how, how I made this. I have this fragment shader. And here I have this um, background where I put together a white color. Um, this is the pink color and this is the blue color for the trans flag. And I used um, this abs absolute value for the Y coordinate. Um, the Y coordinate is going from one to minus one. And um, to make it symmetrical, I used uh, this abs function. So uh, minus values are converted to positive values. And um, then I use this step function to make this flag. And um, let's go to this shape, how I made this. You see um, I made a function for this cross. The cross is uh, this one. And um, made this function for an arrow right. This is uh, this arrow here. And an uh, function for this arrow left, which is this one. And um, yeah, in my scene, I put everything together. So um, I have this add function, I add the ring to the scene, I add a cross to the scene, the arrow and the arrow left to the scene. And yeah, in this uh, single functions like this ring, I add a circle and subtract a smaller circle from the scene, so uh, this so this way um, the circle gets hollow inside, and um, you can also animate this by uh, using these. Um, I used a deform function where I give in my x coordinate of the uh, of the um, of the pixel coordinate, and then give it into a sign function and also pass in a time value and this way the shape is deformed a bit. I can uh, amplify this a bit. Yeah, this looks a bit weird. And this is basically how I create animations in 3JS and WebGL shaders. So that's basically it. I've um, linked some resources in the end. Um, one important resource is the book of shaders. If you get uh, want to get started using shaders, uh, this is a great resource. Uh, I also linked some function examples here. And have fun exploring, I would say. <laughs>